Welcome to tonight's webinar and thank you for coming out. Today we will be converting raster graphics into vector graphics and depending on how we're looking at it on time, we might even convert a vector graphic and throw it into Tinkercad. So just a brief review on what we did last class. We finished off learning about just the basic uh, movements that you can do in Inkscape, specifically with the select tool, you can actually size via um, the XY coordinates at the very top of your screen here. You can specifically size how much you want or how big you want your object. Um, I showed you, ideally, you know, if my Inkscape would work since it was being finicky, I showed you that you can move objects in front or behind others. I talked about object alignment, um, which is not a tool like it says here. You actually have to go into um, the, I believe it's the options menu, and the second from the bottom will be the align and distribute, but you can align and distribute certain objects um, according to how you would like to see them on your screen. And finally, we talked about duplication of objects. To duplicate, you hit Control and then D on your keyboard, whether you're using a Mac or a PC. And note that if you do duplicate an object, it's going to appear directly on top of the old object, so you'll have to move it. We also talked about laser cutting, um, just in terms of doing all sorts of different stuff with it, from art projects to making clothes to just basically cool stuff. We talked about how a laser cutter uses a very focused laser beam in combination with a compressed gas. And the laser beam literally melts or eats through, depending on what it is, the material that you are using. So I do see a question. Your objects would not align, so you're hoping that it's going to work. Luckily, with what we're doing today, you will not need to align your objects. I don't believe unless you really, really, really want to, but um, don't worry if they're not aligning. All right. I mean, you saw what happened last class with my computer just not wanting to deal with, you know, anything I did with Inkscape. So we also discussed the difference in um, cutting, or sorry, using vector and, gra vector and raster graphics. With a laser cutter, um, vector graphics would generally be used to cut out shapes and even assemble objects, such as this right here. Engraving is just like you would engrave, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Engrave your name on something. Um, you can use either a vector or a raster graphic to do this. But when you engrave or etch, which is what this raster thing is, Basically, what the laser printer is doing, or the, sorry, the laser cutter is doing, is it's acting like a printer. It's going back and forth, putting little dots of um, color into whatever you're using to uh, etch or engrave into. Is anybody else having trouble hearing me? It might just be me talking too fast and that making me all jumbly. From time to time. All right, that is one of my big issues, talking very quick. And I'm sure that it's not handling that too well. So I'm going to try to see if slowing down my talking will help any. But veterans know I'm not good at slowing down sometimes. So, all right. So here's an example of a raster graphic on a piece of wood taken from a picture. I already showed you the vector cutting and vector engraving. I guess technically engrave could be raster as well. Remember though, cut can only be vector. These two can be either. Finally, we showed the relationship between speed and power. So a slow speed and a high power is just not okay. Notice that there, oops, there be fire. 
a high speed and low temperature will very, very lightly etch, and you can get any color in between on fire and very lightly etched just by playing around with speed and power. So you did not get a pick from last class, and I'll explain what that means in just a second. The last thing we talked about was getting said pick. I asked at the end of class if you were here, if you went to the other class, you didn't do this. Um, but I asked you all to find a picture of your favorite animal or favorite superhero. I guess that could be the case too. Um, as a clip art. I asked for a clip art because it'll make it a little bit easier later on today. Um, so what we did is we went to images.google.com searched our favorite animal or our favorite superhero to find a picture that we would like to play with today. If you have already gotten a picture that you want to use today, great. If you haven't, I'm going to give you two options. You can either go find a picture really quick right now or I can direct you to a picture of a duck that I will be using in class myself. So if you'd like, let's see if I can get my notepad going. And I know my brackets are wrong, but if you want to find yourself a picture to use, here you go. I want you to pick a picture that has bold outlines and less than six colors. So I'll give you a couple minutes to do that, please raise your hand once you've done it. If you'd rather use the photo of the duck I will be using, I can also direct you to that. Just say in a question, I want to use the duck, and I will send you the link which I have to find myself. Here are our specifications. I will also put the link to the duck in, whoops, let's wrap text here real quick. So if you're watching from home and would like to use this picture as well, you can obtain it fairly easily. Again, please raise your hand once you found your picture that you'd like to use. You can save it as whatever you'd like, and I'll show you how to get it onto Inkscape in just a second here. <clears throat> and I will put that down so you can see. Give you all another 30 seconds or so to do it. You have a black and white picture of Batman. Alright, that'll work. And just to warn you, if you're going to use a black and white photo, you'll see that some of the stuff we do is going to be very, very slightly different. 
it's okay. You're allowed to use that. Just make a mental note that it's going to be just a wee, wee, wee bit different. How do you scale and align toe things? What do you mean? Two things. All right, so if you remember from um, maybe Tinkercad, not Tinkercad, that's what I'm, not what I'm thinking of. Um, let me just draw some stuff real quick for you. You want to do them at the same time, I'm assuming, right? Would you like to scale and align two things at the same time? And here we go already <laughs> with my stuff messing up. Basically what you would do There we go. You can make posters like this, definitely. So did scale and align more than one thing at once? Oh, you want to scale one thing and align it with the other thing? You would do it just in that order. So what I mean by that is first you would pick whichever object that you'd like to scale. I was going to choose the big star here, but my computer is a couple steps behind my brain. And remember, there's a couple different options to scale. Let's go back to my slides so I can actually show you. A couple different options to scale here. Make sure you got the select tool selected, which is the um, the, the one at the very top left. Click on it, on the object that you'd like to scale, and ideally some areas will pop up that you can scale that way, just by clicking and dragging. Let's see if my thing is ready to go. What is this? Go away. So, meow, meow. to align it with the other object, you click on an object, and near the bottom of that drop down menu there is an option called align and distribute so object and then align and distribute there will be a pop-up in the same area that the fill and stroke pop-ups appear at And what you would do, if I'm not mistaken here, and again, if it would work for me, I would actually show you this. You'll notice that there's a couple options in this drop down menu here that the drop down menu next to relative to. If you're aligning relative to, say, the last thing you selected, you would want to select it, select that option, and give it a try 
over on this side, or, or sorry, under the align uh, menu here. Oh my goodness. It's, you know, if my software would work for me, rather. What computer do I have? Um, it's a computer I built myself. It, it's a couple years old though, so I think it's a little bit old. Like, not as high grade as it could be. But overall, to align something, this is the menu you'd want to be in the align and distribute menu. Your aunt did that and it's big. Yeah, building your own computer is the way to go. Honestly, it's a lot cheaper. I got this one for less than $800 and it's still fairly high end, or it's probably medium end at this point, but. I give up on you right now, Inkscape. You're being frustrating. So let's do something a little bit more fun here. <laughs> Let's go oops, and actually convert something from raster into vector. So what you could do if you wanted to say find a duck image that you, uh, sorry, a duck vector image, you can go into Google Images and advanced search and search only for .svg files but say you get an, a set of items that looks awful that you don't want anything of. Like, I don't like any of these ducks here. They look bad. I want a cooler looking duck. Something like this, maybe. Inkscape will actually let you create a vector image by doing a trace of a raster image, like the one below. That's the same image that I had up here. Just a simple raster image. And you're saying you got an Asus Windows 10, it's slow. Yeah, Windows 10 is very, very, uh, let's just say I don't have much th good things to say about it. A little bit resource heavy there. And Donald Duck is cool, but say you, you didn't want Donald Ducks to be in your, in a game. It works so you're happy. Yeah, exactly. So we're actually going to, not that, open up the object that we are going to use in Inkscape. The way we do this, again, <laughs> all right, Josiah. So what you are going to do is go to file and then import <coughs> pardon me <sighs> you're going to navigate to wherever you saved your object. <coughs> In my case, it was my pictures. But wherever you saved it, go ahead and navigate to that. Find wherever your picture is and click on open. You want to make sure that your options correspond to the ones you see here image import type, embed, image DPI, from file. Before I go on, does anybody remember, or yeah, anybody remember what DPI means? I think I said it once or twice last class, briefly. It 
stands for dots per inch. So that's how clear a raster image would be when printed. So a printer has, um, basically it's very similar to the pixels I was talking about with your raster image. Yours didn't save, give you a second? All right, I can do that. But basically, raster images are made of pixels. Printers print by putting a whole bunch of dots where the computer tells them to put these dots. Normal 2D printers print raster. 3D printers, vector. And I'll keep this window up for another couple seconds, so don't worry if you have to go back and do something with your photos. Image rendering mode, you want to make sure you select smooth, optimized quality. You have no idea what you're doing. All right, did you save your image? If you're having trouble saving your image, just go ahead and use mine for now. I'll show you how to do it. That way you can apply it for your own image later. It's still saved at Google. All right, if you're in Google Images, what you have to do, once you click on the object that you'd like to use, this black screen will pop up to give you an image preview. You'll want to click on the right hand side, view image. I guess you could also hit save. No, you don't want to save it there. You want to hit view image so that a screen like this will pop up. Now I want you to right click on the image and hit save image as. And you want to save it somewhere where you can find it. So maybe your desktop maybe your pictures folder. So does it, do you want to see that one more time? The process. Sorry, I'm having a student that's having some difficulty. 
And that's okay. It's just a matter of practice. Have you gotten it? And if not, I'm going to ask you to use my image. And I'm just getting radio silence. All right. Um, <laughs> All right. I want you to use my image here. I'm going to send you the link. The what's again? The process again? All right. One more time. When you find the image you want to use, you want to click on it. So that this black screen pops up. You want to click on view image on the right hand side of your screen. You want to right click the image and click on save image as. Then you would like to save it somewhere that you can find it, which I would like you to save yours on your desktop. So to save it on your desktop, you click on desktop and save. Actually, how about this? Got it? All right, cool. So we're going to an Inkscape, go to File, and then Import. And we want to select Smooth Optimized Quality next to Image Rendering Mode. I think that everything else is going to be automatically the same. Okay, file, import, smooth, optimized quality next to image rendering mode. And then we're going to hit OK. So that our image pops up. We can make it bigger, or smaller, or whatever size we want. But we're going to put it onto this white piece of paper here. Doesn't matter how big it, it is, we're just literally going to be putting the file we use onto our screen.
Everyone have that open and ready to go? Cool. So now we're going to, oops, hang on, I see a question first. You put it in the little box. Okay, cool. So we're going to go ahead and right click on our picture now so that a whole bunch of different options pop up. There's lots of options, options in this program, if you haven't noticed yet. And we're going to look for one in this menu that says Trace Bitmap. And we're going to select Trace Bitmap. So when I say trace, basically what the software is going to do, um, actually before I go there, you ask, you're asking what DPI do I use? You want to use, um, I'll just go back up here. You just want to use from file. It's not going to matter ultimately which DPI you use because we're going to make it into a vector anyway, which doesn't require DPI or doesn't make any sense to have DPI. And if you're a little bit farther than this and you can't for whatever reason, um, you can't get the right clicking to work. It's not because you have too many colors, it's not at this point. It's because you don't have the select tool selected and you don't have your object selected. You have to have your object selected so that the trace bitmap is not grayed out. So again, you want to make sure that you've got your select tool selected. And that you have your duck selected. So remember when it's selected, you'll have this dotted line around it. Then you should be able to right click and find trace bitmap. Now is the question more it won't do that because your software is weird, or it won't do that because you don't have a mouse that can right click. You got it? All right. So right click, trace bitmap. So what I was talking about is tracing. This software will actually go over all of the different lines and colors of your image and create paths out of them. So if you remember, vector images are made of nodes and paths. A start point, a way to the finish point. So, as you see in the menu that pops up, there are six different options to play around with. Three for what we call single scan, which is when we only do one scan and try to replicate the object as best we can. And three for multiple scans, which will do more than one um, trace of the object and create a vector image that is stacked on top of each other. So let's go way back to the beginning just for a second here. <coughs> Sorry just like this right here. We're going to stack them to make one single coherent image. So what you can do is click on one of these options and click on update to see what happens. You could definitely play with the pictures 
So you can play with the... Um, I want you to try each of these scans here. So to do that, you will click in the little... Uh, the little circle here to select it and then hit update. I want you to do that for all six, but I also want you to note what happens if you change your threshold or your colors or your scans. So notice that stuff is showing up, going away, looking different. But notice that for these single scans, it by default goes black and white. You'll notice that if you play with the single scans first and then go to the multiple scans, that it's going to stay in black and white. I don't think there's a very good way to get around that or to get around seeing what happens color-wise other than by, not by hitting OK, I did the exact wrong thing there. Um, I guess you could hit OK and then hit Control Z, which is undo which is what I just did. I guess I should have told you all to do the color scans first. <laughs> Didn't think about it. No, I think it's just mad at me. but we're going to try to find a scan that looks fairly similar to the original image. We're not looking for black and white quite yet. What I found is the best is colors with eight scans. Oh wow, there's a reset button right here. That would have been nice to know 15 seconds ago. You could definitely hit the reset button if you don't like what's going on. But once you've gotten the chance to play with it, I want you to click on Colors, Scans 8, and then OK. You're not late, you're just not early. Okay, I'll allow it because you did make it here. <laughs> so colors, eight scans and okay. When you hit OK, this dialog box will not disappear. It'll still stay there, but it will have done what you told it to do. So please raise your hand once you found the scan that you would like to use. Or, and by that I mean the scan that I told you to use. <laughs> It'll be different depending on which um, which image you're using, but 
for this one, for example, the best is um, color and eight scans. If you're If it's not working for whatever reason, please use the duck image. I know for a fact this one works. Once you know the process, you can do this for any of your own images later. So you might be saying, well, Miss Saunders, this looks nothing different than it did before. Anyone else thinking that? Right here? Yeah, that's all right. Um, actually, I got ahead of myself. But I'll tell you, I'll show you one thing in a second about that after I talk about this. When you do trace something... I highly, highly, highly recommend that after you hit OK and X out of that dialog box, that you hit Control L on your keyboard to simplify your image. You might notice that these images look very similar, but a little bit different, especially in the detail on the legs. These are legs, trust me, it's hard to tell, but they are. What happens when you trace something? Like I said before, there will be a whole bunch of nodes and paths. If you click on the upper left side of your screen, underneath the select tool, There is an option that says Edit Paths by Nodes. If you click on it, and then you click anywhere on your image, you'll be able to see all the nodes of your image. So all these boxes are nodes. kind of a lot of nodes, isn't it? But if I hit control and then L on my keyboard, notice that the number of nodes decreases. So one more time what I've done. After I do my trace, Underneath the select tool, there's an option that says edit paths by nodes. I'll click anywhere on my image and hit control L on my keyboard. It'll make the file size a little bit smaller. It'll make it look a little bit more smooth, a little bit less detailed. But especially for what we'll be doing, I guess, next class, you'll want to do this. It'll make it a whole lot easier. You'll also notice the fact that there are nodes means that you have successfully made a vector image out of a raster image. So now, 
maybe I was doing this because I wanted to make a banner for my cat's birthday. Now I can make this duck as big or as small as possible. So I see a couple requests for how to do the nodes one more time. All right, I'll do it one more time for you. So after I, oops, a little bit too far. After I hit OK on this window, the trace bitmap window, and X out of the window, I'll be left with an image that looks very similar to what I started with. I will click right underneath the select tool in the upper left hand corner on the tool that will have hover under text that says edit paths by nodes. I click on that. I click anywhere on my image to view the nodes. So this is all the nodes I've got right now. When you see all of the nodes, I want you to hit the control key on your keyboard and then L at the same time to simplify your design. any questions on that process because we will be using the edit paths by nodes tool next class. And I will go over this next class again as review. Yeah, it's pretty cool and it's pretty easy too. Instead of having to mathematically solve it or draw it by hand or something, um, but yeah, I agree, it's pretty cool. So we've got one or two things, or one thing to do before we save it. We're going to go to File, and near the bottom there should be an option that says Document Properties. We're going to select that. File document properties. You'll see a whole bunch of tabs. On the first tab that pops up, the page tab, there will be a, a box labeled custom size. In that box, there's a little um, plus sign, and it says resize page to content. And I want you to click on that plus sign to open up the win open up the menu here. And we will be clicking resize page to drawing or selection. Alright, um, just make sure that you save as a .svg file. You save it to your desktop? All right. 
So resize page to drawing or selection. And I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, <laughs> take care, Josiah. I don't need to look at that for next class because this should not be happening. It should be literally, you know, atop the duck. It might just be a glitch. But you will notice that the duck is literally the same size as that piece of paper in the background. That's what we want. I'm, I'm seriously not sure what's going on with those nodes there. <laughs> it might be because you can't have it selected, maybe. And I'll check on that for next class. But last thing we're going to do today, <laughs> we're going to save it. You want to make sure that you save it as a .svg file. So file, save as. Save as type. In my case, it's Inkscape SVG. I guess it is in this case, too. It should be the default. Save it somewhere where you can find it. So any questions on the process? You can do this for almost any image. Some will work better than others. You can do this to any image and make a poster out of it, for example, which is a cool application I didn't think about. So if you find an image that you like on the internet and it is a bitmap or a PNG or a JPEG, you can use this process. Then you can end up blowing it up to five feet tall if you want to and get it printed in a print shop and have your very own cool poster that you kind of designed yourself. So if you don't have any questions and you've gotten your image saved, you may head out for the night. And I appreciate you coming out. If you do have questions, I will be here to answer them. So thank you very much.